This is Mike, and right now he's struggling to play Crazy Train, even though he's been practically sleeping with the Randy Rhodes tribute tab book under his pillow, and he's given up his social life just so he could practice more. He's practicing three hours a day, but he's too embarrassed to let anyone find out, because if anyone hears how much work he's been putting in after seeing how badly he plays, they'd just laugh and confirm his nagging suspicion that he's definitely too old to play guitar. Poor guy, what he really needs is to stop making the same four mistakes 90% of guitar players make that wreck their progress, make them feel like they have no talent, and make even the simplest guitar riffs feel harder than tuning a Floyd Rose bridge with your teeth. Now fortunately, this is Mike recording his own solo album after he's fixed those mistakes and finally learned to play guitar the way he wanted. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact mistakes Mike was making so you can look out for them in your playing. And at the end, I'll show you a massive realization Mike had that allowed him to skyrocket his progress and help hundreds of the students do the same. And I'm gonna be pretty blunt because even though it's probably hard to tell, I am Mike. And the best way to show you how these four mistakes are wrecking your progress is by talking about Amazon. Imagine you ordered something off Amazon and it arrived in a box like this, but when you open it up, you realize that's the box they used to send you a guitar pick. Now let me quickly rename these things. This box is the amount of time you practice guitar. And whatever you package in that box is the amount of progress you're able to get out of that practice time. And this is why 90% of guitarists don't get better. You see, it doesn't matter if you practice for 10 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, or three hours a day, if the amount of progress you're able to package into that time is no bigger than the size of a guitar pick, you're not gonna get better any faster by making the box bigger. And that's exactly what was happening to me, but I was just too dumb to realize it. And instead of trying to understand why my current practicing wasn't making me better, I just tried to do more of what I was already doing. <sighs> what an idiot I was. Oops. So let me show you an example of how I was wrecking my own progress by unveiling the first mistake that almost all rock guitar players make. And you can see me making this mistake very clearly right here. What it does is it puts your picking hand shoulder in an awkward position so your playing never feels as easy as your favorite guitar players make it look. It also puts an extreme amount of strain on your fretting hand which makes stretching way harder. But the worst part is that this way of playing is so widespread, I expect a bunch of you in the comments to scream things like, What are you talking about? Ingram, Paul Gilbert. And Steve Vai, they sit with their guitar on the right leg and they play great. And more power to those guys. But for 90% of guitar players, this sitting position equals learning guitar on hard mode. So after looking at some photos of Randy Rhodes, who was my favorite guitarist at the time, and seeing him sit with the guitar in the classical position, I thought to myself, huh, why won't I try this? And once I did, holding the guitar felt like upgrading from a Flintstones mobile to being chauffeured in a Rolls Royce. Right away, my picking hand shoulder became more relaxed, my fretting hand elbow stopped digging into my side when I tried to play stretchy guitar licks, and it became way easier to switch between playing sitting and playing standing. And because I was now practicing in a better position, my technique and the rest of my playing began to develop a lot faster. But shortly after I made the change, I became aware of my second progress wrecking mistake. And this one is the number one reason and why you may feel like your hands are too small to play guitar, and why your fingers can't reach far enough to play the licks you see other people nail with ease, even after you switch to the classical sitting position. And it's this exact mistake that kept me struggling to spread my fingers even for the simple intro of Crazy Train. But once I fixed it, it allowed me to play the chords and licks that I previously thought I'd need Van Damme flexibility to play. You see, the reason why so many guitarists struggle with the reach of their fretting hand is the same reason why a Corolla could potentially outrun a Ferrari in a race if you're driving the Ferrari in first gear while it's towing a caravan filled with sumo wrestlers. Huh, this guy is pretty squishy. But the moment you kick out the sumo wrestlers and unhook the caravan and allow the Ferrari to use the full power of its engine, then boom, it's game over for the Corolla and it's got no chance. Now on guitar, when you point your thumb towards the tuning pegs or have it too close to the low E string, it becomes like that caravan attached to a Ferrari. You're simply not letting yourself use the full reach of your fretting hand, even if your fingers are plenty long enough to play guitar. But when you have your thumb position more vertical and slide it closer to the high E string instead, all of a sudden, bam, your fingers extend like telescopic selfie sticks. This next mistake leads to you having to make this pretty embarrassing admission to your guitar playing friends like, Do I know Crazy Train? Of course, bro. But, uh... Only after the solo, though. What's that? Sweet child of mine? Oh, I know that one. Yep, but, uh... 
only the intro though. But the solution is incredibly simple and it allows you to potentially learn even very advanced songs without being a very advanced guitar player. To show you what I mean, I've got these cups and each of the cups is a section of a song you're trying to learn. The green line is your current skill level on guitar. The red line is the amount of additional skill you have to pour into that part of the song to play it up to speed. And here's how the problem goes down. For the first part of the song, the green line, which is your skill level, is above the red line, so you get it under your fingers pretty quick. The second one is a bit beyond your current skill level, but with a bit of practice, you can still do it. And then bam, you hit the third part of the song and that looks pretty insane. Look at how much higher the red line is above the green line. To close this gap and play this up to speed may well take you months, if not years. And this is the point where most guitars do one of two things that really hold them back. <sighs> this is too hard. I don't know. I'll get to it later, I guess. Oh, look, that Mr. Crowley song looks easier. Let me learn that first, and then I'll come back and finish Crazy Train later. Yeah, sure. Like, you're definitely not going to jump onto No More Tears a week later or anything. But even if you say, I'm going to stick with this hard part no matter what until I nail it. The problem is, all that time you spend focusing on the hardest part of the song, these other cups remain completely unfilled, and you have to continue sheepishly telling people that you can't play any song all the way through. So how do we solve this? All you do is you learn each part of the song up to the green line, which is your current skill level, and then move on to the next part of the song. This way, instead of spending weeks or months learning the entire song, you can get it down in a matter of days. And only after you've learned the entire song all the way through, then you can reassess and decide if it makes sense for you to close the gap on the hardest part of the song or if you'll be better off moving on and learning another song depending on your goal. Either way, you'll at least have one entire song in the bag even if it's not up to speed yet. Which leads me to mistake number four. And this one wastes so much time when you're learning songs that when you stop making it, gains will pour in like you were just bitten by a radioactive guitar progress super spider. I call this the yo-yo effect, but not the Jason Becker shredding on guitar while playing with the yo-yo kind of effect. I mean that when you start to play a song and you get to the hard part, instead of identifying what's going wrong and where the mistakes are happening and then trying to fix them, we simply yo-yo all the way back and start over at the beginning of a song. And then we keep going like that until we eventually run out of time or get bored or we think we're done practicing and that's it. Now, you'd think a solution to a problem like this is more obvious than a Jeopardy question about a Swedish guitarist who plays a Strat and doesn't believe less can be more. All you do is just repeat the hard parts more and avoid wasting time on the easy bits, duh. But this doesn't explain why, A, it took me a good 18 months to figure this out and start practicing like it in my own playing, and B, why I have to keep pointing this out over and over to a lot of my guitar students students who don't practice like this, even though this point is pretty obvious. And this is what led me to the massive realization that changed my guitar playing forever. Practicing guitar, aka our ability to learn things, is a little bit like typing on a keyboard. You can type with one finger, with two fingers, or you can get some training and become really efficient and crank out 100 words a minute. In other words, anyone can type but we all do it with different levels of efficiency and skill. And so it is with practicing guitar. And once I realized this, I decided to set myself a challenge. I wanted to see if I could create a 20 minute practice routine that could potentially give me more gains than I previously could get in two or even three hours of practicing. And I show you exactly what that routine is and how you can use it in your own playing starting today in this video right here, which I highly recommend you watch next.